Hello there, right, so uh, in the last video we managed to get our virtual pet reacting to its different levels, its different attributes. Um, so we have, in my case, we have thirst, hunger and tiredness, and at the moment he's perfectly happy, but when it reaches, when these levels reach different values, then this code here is going to be either telling it to fall asleep, or look very thirsty, or look slightly thirsty, or look hungry. So hopefully you've managed to get yours doing something similar to that. Um, today, we're going to look at these items on the right. We're going to make it so that we can feed these items or give these items to our pet, and that will affect the levels. So um, my apple, uh, if I give that to my pet, it's going to reduce the hunger. My glass of water is going to reduce the thirst. The packet of crisps is going to reduce the hunger, but it's also going to increase the thirst because they're salty, salty crisps. And the uh, cup of coffee is going to reduce the tiredness and also reduce the thirst as well. Um, so, oh, well, as we can see at the moment, he's currently thirsty and, and he's just fallen asleep. There we go. OK, so let's just stop that running for the moment. So I want to be able to drag and drop these items. and I'm literally going to grab them and drag them and drop them onto the pet to feed the pet. Now, that works fine in this little editing window here. But when the game is running in full screen, and most of the time when people are running our programs, they'll be doing it in this view, in full screen view, um, you can't drag and drop items in here. You can, all of these items are not draggable. So one of the things we'll need to do is to set these sprites for these items here so they are draggable when you're in this view, in this full screen view. So let's do that first of all. We'll say, um, I'm doing it on the apple here, so I'm on the apple sprite. When the flag is clicked, we are going to set this drag mode, which is a light blue block, set the drag mode of this apple to draggable. So if I just run that now, go into full screen view, I can't drag these ones, but I can drag the apple around. So there we are, that is in draggable mode. Okay, we want this thing to um, to then be checking to see whether it's being dropped onto the pet. When we do that, we want it to disappear, and then after a certain amount of time, we want it to come back again. So once we fed it one apple, then after a certain amount of time, which can be random, we could make it appear again. So this same sprite will appear and disappear and appear and disappear. Let's make it so that it starts off hidden. So when we first click on our start button, it's hidden. Um, then we're going to go into a loop. So this is going to happen forever. Let's just stick a forever loop in here. We will tell it to wait for a random amount of time, and then we'll get it to appear on the screen. So we'll get a wait block. And we'll choose a random number. So we'll get a, a, a green operators block. And we'll say a random amount of time. You can change this to whatever you like. But I'm going to say between 5 and 20 seconds. In fact, let's just make it 10 seconds for now. Because for demonstration purposes, we don't want to be waiting around for ages. So we'll wait between 5 and 10 seconds. At that point, we want it to uh, show. Because at the moment, it's hidden, isn't it? So we'll tell it to show. So now it appears. And I want it to go back to here. So even if I've dragged it somewhere else, when it appears, I want it to appear up there in that corner. So if I go to the um, motion blocks and I go get one of these go-tos, that those numbers on there are wherever it currently is, up at the top there. So I'll pop that in there. So that's where it's going to appear on the screen. OK. At that point, we're going to wait until it's been fed to the animal. So there is a block called wait until. So we'll pop that in there. And we'll say wait until we are touching. And my pet is called Drago. I've called my sprite Drago here. So I'll say wait until touching Drago. And at that point, it will be eaten. Um, let's just have it so it makes a noise for the moment. So when I drop it on, it should make a like an eating sound. And I think that an apple sprite, because I used one of the built-in apple sprites, it comes with a sound of 
uh, an apple being eaten. There we go. I don't know if you could hear that. I'll turn it up on my on my speakers. There we go. Anyway, there's a, there's an, e an eating sound there. So that means I can just go to sound and I can say play, uh, start sound. There we go, start sound, chomp. And then it needs to disappear. So once it's been eaten, it's going to disappear. Let's just see what happens if I just try that as it is. So it's hidden. After a random amount of time, it should appear. And there it is. And if I drag and drop, then it makes the noise. I heard that noise and it's disappeared. And then it should have come back up to the top here. And now it's waiting a random time again. And there it is. Drag and drop. There we go. And then after a random amount of time, it'll come back. So it's in this forever loop. It'll keep doing that. It'll keep on appearing and disappearing. Great. So when it's been eaten, so when it's made that chomping sound, we want to change our hunger variable. Change hunger by, let's say, minus 5. Not 85, 5. So it will reduce the hunger by 5. Okay. Let's just test that. So my hunger is currently 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, if I drop it on there, my hunger's gone down to 2. So there we are. That's reduced it by 5. So there we are. That's the apple done. Brilliant. Um, does everything it should do. Keeps coming back. Great. Okay. Let's move on to something like the glass of water. Let's grab that. And in order to make this quick, I'm just going to grab this code and drop it onto my glass of water. So I don't have to write it all again. Okay. My glass of water now has exactly the same code on it. Okay. But I don't want it exactly the same. To start with, this place where it needs to go to um, I don't want it to go to the same place where the apple was. I want it to go here. So I'm just going to look at these numbers at this point on the screen. I'm just going to copy them. So that is 153, and the Y is 46. Okay, wait until touching Drago. That's fine. Start sound. Oh, so we don't need a chomp sound. We want a drinking sound. I think the glass of water has got a drinking sound with it. Not really a drinking sound. It's more of a more of a dropping water sound. But that's fine. I'll use that water drop. And we're not changing hunger by five. We'll change thirst by well, a glass of water would reduce it by quite a lot. So I'm going to say twenty minus twenty. Now, watch what happens to my numbers here. I'll, I'll just see if I can make this any uh, any bigger. Can I get a large readout? Right, that that eight there. That is the thirst for my creature. But I'll go into full screen view so you can see it more clearly. Right, so this big number in the middle is thirst. So when my glass of water appears, I'm going to drop it onto Drago. Come on, there it is. And watch what happens to that thirst. Minus 12. Minus 12. So that's not, that's no good, right? We don't want it to be a minus number. Because the problem was that uh, it it's taking it off by 20. It's taking 20 off the thirst, but it wasn't on 20. It was on, I don't know, 10 or something. So we don't ever want those levels to go below zero. So I need to add something in here. Change thirst by minus 20. But then if, let's pop this down here. If that means that the thirst is less than zero. So if that means that thirst is less than zero, then I will just set thirst to zero. Okay, so take 20 off, but if thirst is less than zero, then set it to zero. So now it shouldn't be possible to go under zero on that thirst. Let's just check it. Three, four, five, there we go. Drop it on there. It goes to zero and it stays there. Okay, right. Okay, so that is, that's those. Um, if I was going to do the same with coffee, then as well as changing thirst, I would also change uh, tiredness. And for the crisps, I would need to increase hunger um, as well as uh, changing the, uh, and also the thirst. Now, um, one other thing, sounds, uh, putting in sounds that don't already exist. The apple and the glass of water had sounds on them already. Coffee does not, because that is something I've drawn. I drew that coffee 
I drew that coffee picture. And so I've recorded a sound of drinking coffee to put on there. If you want to listen to it. Okay. That's literally me just going like that. Okay. Crisps. I, it hasn't. Well, okay. It's got a built in sound of, but that, that's no good. So I'm getting rid of that. I want to record a sound of someone eating crisps. Have I got any crisps? I don't think I've got any crisps. So I'll, I'll have to pretend, but you could record your own. So down here, I'm going to go choose a sound, record. Right, this is now recording. Hello, hello, one, two, one, two. So I'm going to make a sound. I'm going to pretend I'm eating crisps. Right, what does that sound like? Listen. Right, okay, that's not bad. I'll just get rid of the bit where you can hear me clicking on the mouse. There we go. Fine. Save. That's done. So that can be the recording for the crisp sound. Feel free to record your own noises. You could also record noises for your different states. So at the moment when Drago is sleeping, I've got this code that shows these sprites. What about if it also made a noise? So what about if when it was showing these sleepy costumes, it also made maybe a snoring sound? You could put different sounds on your different states. So it made noises, maybe a grumbling sound when it was hungry or a panting sound when it was thirsty. Have a think about that. Anyway, lots to be going on with. Good luck with that.